Hello, hello, welcome to the FanDuel Punch-Out. As you know, I am Big Italy 42, and I'm here discussing everything on FanDuel tonight for your MLB action. Got eight games on tap for tonight, so a solid slate and a little bit of weather concerns here with these first two games, so I'll cover that here briefly. Starting off with the Chicago Cubs at the Pittsburgh Pirates, and A.J. Burnett, a minus 110, slight favorite over Jake Arrieta. Looks like a 40-plus percent chance of rain in this one, so monitor this before you look at these pitchers, but with a seven-run total, it's the lowest on the day, so targeting a pitcher here, assuming that there's no legitimate weather concerns, might not be a bad idea, but we got Jake Arrieta, $9,200 today here on FanDuel, and he's a righty. Pirates not off to a great start offensively this year, but they were one of the better teams against right-handed pitching last year, but same time, Jake Arrieta's 27.2% strikeout rate. The best among all pitchers today, and it's not particularly close. So I don't mind him today, assuming the weather is good to go there in Pittsburgh. Um, as far as hitters go in this one, I do like Anthony Rizzo. He's sitting at $4,500, but I don't think he's a must-play anything like that because there are a lot of options at first base, which I'll get to. On the opposite side of the ball here, you've got some tournament options, of course. You've got Pedro Alvarez sitting at $3,300. Probably not a route I'll be taking more than just a single bullet, only because he is a first base, like I mentioned. First base really stacked today. You've got some uh, guys like Gregory Polanco, if he gets a nice spot in the order. He's in a fine spot, but I'm really not going out of my way to pick on Jake Arrieta. I do want to pick on the 350 Wolves allowed to lefties by A.J. Burnett. That's where Anthony Rizzo comes into play. Nobody else I'm really going out of my way to play here in a seven-run total on an eight-game slate. Next up, the Yankees at the Detroit Tigers, and this is a game where I want to get myself a lot of hitters. You've got CeCe Sabathia, lefty on the mound, who was absolutely abysmal against righties last year. Granted, it was under 40 innings pitch, but a 401 will ball out. And this Detroit team just absolutely mashes lefties. You've got guys like Rajai Davis, who has great splits, just $3,300, should be leading off today as long as Brad Osmus, you know, is paying attention. He hits lefties. Anthony Gos, a fine hitter, but... Not Rajay Davis. Doesn't have the splits that he does against lefties. So should be Rajay Davis there in the two-hole. I really like J.D. Martinez and his power just $4,000 today. Absolutely crushes left-handed pitching. Yoenis Cespedes on fire right now, too. Two homers in his last game, including a grand slam. So he's in play. A guy I really like his price, of course, is Victor Martinez. $3,900 sitting at the catcher today. He has different eligibility on some other sites, but... Catcher, not a particularly deep position. I'm probably going to lock in Victor Martinez in most of my lineups here today. Obviously, Miguel Cabrera's in play. $5,000 is pretty pricey, but I don't blame you. Ian Kinsler as well. Really, all these Tigers bats in play for me. On the Yankees side of things, Alfredo Simon, a contact pitcher. Not a guy that strikes out a lot of batters, so I like Brett Gardner, Jacoby Ellsbury on that side if you're going to target anyone. Nobody in the middle infield I'm really going out of my way to play here. Jose Iglesias. Best batting average of all shortstops so far this year, 2,900. Hitting down order, of course, but if you need a punt, I think you do much worse than a team in a great spot. Um, but, uh, yeah, there, there's some other more pricey options. I don't mind him as a punt, though. Next up, Cincinnati at Milwaukee here. Willie Peralta, Wiley Peralta, whatever you like to call him. I like to go with Wiley E. Peralta. And he's uh, $7,200 against Anthony DiScalafini. And this one's interesting. you got a hitter's ballpark. Minus 114 for Peralta on this one. Eight-run total. Peralta, great ground ball pitcher. 53.6% ground ball rate. But what he also does have is a terrible split against lefties. 361 will be allowed to left-handed batters last season. I want a piece of that. I'm going to be looking towards Joey Votto at $4,400 as the top option from the red side there. Jay Bruce is in play at $3,400. Tournament-only option. Not a guy to hit for average, of course, but he's got power. Already mentioned Peralta struggles against lefties. So if Bruce, he should be hitting around fifth in the order today. I mean, he's a tournament-only option. Really not a cash game play. He's just as likely to go over four as he is to hit a dinger. So maybe more likely to go over four. But he's in play for tournaments for me. If you're looking on the opposite side of things, I'm not going out of my way to pick on Dace Clafini. He's been fine. He's got some bad splits against lefties, though, from last season, from his time in... Um, in Florida with the Marlins. So Adam Lind in play here, $3,400. But with so many options at first base, I think that first base I'm going to be paying up for some bigger bats instead. 
And I don't think Jace Clafini a terrible tournament play there at $6,900. Slight underdog, but has pitched well in his first two starts this season. So looking for a tournament option, I think you do much worse than him. Next up, Cleveland at the Chicago White Sox. We've got Trevor Bauer, who's off to a shaky but great start. He didn't allow a hit in his first start in six innings, but he did allow five walks. He had 11 strikeouts against Houston. Turn that around against this same White Sox team. Four hits, four walks, and six innings with eight Ks. So high strikeout upside with him, but also a lot of volatility. Wind blowing out here in Chicago today. Not a guy I'm targeting in my cash games. He makes for a good GPP option, but struggles with fly balls. I mean, his his fly ball rate last season, really concerning at 41.3%. Against a lot of power in this White Sox lineup, makes him a GPP only option for me. Gotta love yourself some Carlos Santana at $3,200 at first base. Against the opposite side, John Danks. This Cleveland team cannot hit lefties well, but Carlos Santana, one of the few exceptions that can hit lefties. I like him in this one. Don't love a lot of the other targets. Brandon Moss, if you want to chase a home run, worth a tournament bullet, in my opinion. Um, all these other guys, these lefty bats, not targeting them in the lefty-lefty matchup here as far as Cleveland goes. White Sox side, Jose Abreu, $4,400, always in play, especially against a fly ball pitcher. And, I mean, he uh, he finally started to turn around, hit himself a grand slam a couple games ago against Detroit. So he's starting to get things going. I'm a huge fan of Jose Abreu. I like him today in this matchup as well. And other than him, Adam Eaton, the worst hitting outfielder in the league right now. But at 2,600, if you do think there will be some runs scored in this one, and Vegas does seem to think there will be some runs scored in this one, because we've got ourselves a nice nine-run total here with uh, Bauer being a slight favorite. I do think there will be some runs, so I will be looking at some Adam Eaton at $2,600 to fill out some rosters here. Next up on the docket, Minnesota at the Kansas City Royals here. And this one's interesting because it's an eight-run total. Edison Volk has a minus-145 favorite, a guy who's really had a ton of command issues in his career. Pitching well, pitched well last year, off to a pretty solid start this year, 12 strikeouts and 15 and two-thirds. Got to win. Last time these two teams faced off was these two same pitchers. Volquez gave up three runs and seven and two-thirds with seven Ks. He did not get the win. Kyle Gibson on the other side is an interesting guy for your tournaments. $6,300. Pitched very well in that game. Scattered nine hits over six and two-thirds. Just three strikeouts. He does not have much strikeout upside. But 54.4% ground ball rate is elite. 291 Wobo allowed to righties. 315 to lefties. The guy's got the stuff to keep this team in check. So if you want a tournament bullet, not a ton of upside, but a guy that should give you quality innings, Kyle Gibson's your guy. He comes in at $2,700 less than Edison Volquez. And just to put in perspective, Volquez 11.66 fantasy points in that game, and Gibson 12.66 as he got the win. So depending on which way you want to go with this one, Volquez way too pricey for me at $9,000 in this matchup. I like him at some other places better. If you want hitters, Lorenzo Cain, one of the hottest hitters on the planet at 4K. Mike Moustakis, $3,100 at third base. Not a particularly deep position here, so I don't mind him. I want to say Brian Dozier, but... Man, he's just not playing well right now. He's uh, he's a tournament option for me, but that's about it. You've got your guys like Joe Maurer in decent spots as usual. Sal Perez, I hate his lineup spot. I wish he was batting higher in the order. I might get myself some exposure. But all in all, I don't mind either pitcher in this one. So I'm not going to be targeting a ton of hitters here. Next up, San Diego Padres at the Colorado Rockies. This is what we're talking about. This is why we play Daily Fantasy. And a nine-and-a-half run total. Jorge De La Rosa, minus 125 favorite over Odrissimer de Spain. And De La Rosa, one of those really, really strange situations with him. Kind of an aberration, we thought. But over the last two years, significantly better at course field, which is not something you often see with pitchers. But he's got nice ground ball rates, 51.6%. Great against lefties, 241 Wobba allowed. Not so good against righties, 336 Wobba. So everyone in play here. All the San Diego Padres bats, you've got Justin Upton, if he's back in the lineup. Matt Kemp, he's sitting at 4,300. He's not a bad play. Will Myers should be leading off. He's 37. I don't mind him. Yangera Solarte is $2,600. If he's got a nice lineup spot, I like him. And on the Colorado side, you got to like them all. Justin Morneau at $4,000. Corey Dickerson being the highlight, as he is at home against a righty. And uh, 
$4,900. Um, just Bain got, has some nice splits against righties at 255, but not so much against lefties at 322 all allowed. So Dickerson, Gonzalez, Tulowitzki, all these guys in play. Really, whoever gets you a nice lineup spot in a great spot in this 9.5 run total. So get yourself some exposure to this game. You are going to need it. Next up, Oakland at the Los Angeles Lake. Los Angeles. I'm, I'm watching NBA over here last night. So I'm in NBA mode with my brain. brain. Turn it back around. Los Angeles Angels. Minus 145 favorite for Matt Shoemaker over Kendall Graveman. Seven and a half run total. So should be more of a pitcher's duel here. But Vegas tends to think the Angels are going to be the ones scoring the runs here. And Matt Shoemaker guy I don't mind in cash games at 8,500. Got a nice strikeout rate at 22.8%. 4.4% walk rate last year, so he does not give up a lot of free passes. He's one of the better uh, better starting pitchers on the board tonight. 271 Woba allowed to righties. There are some lefties in this Oakland lineup that can mash, but he was solid against lefties as well. 308 Woba allowed, so don't mind him at all. Uh, if you're not going his route, you can go Steven Vogt at catcher, assuming he's got a nice lineup spots. Ike Davis as well, but first base, like I said, so deep, not forcing him in. Ben Zobris could end up missing tonight. He's listed as uh, day-to-day. If he sits out, that makes me like uh, Matt Shoemaker even more. As far as the Angels go, Cole Calhoun, $3,600. Love his price. $2,300 cheaper than Mike Trout. I'll be getting myself quite a bit of Cole Calhoun. That's going to be the, my main hitting target for this one. Not a ton of guys that I love here. Houston at Seattle. And this one's going to be interesting here. You've got Hisashi Iwakuma at a minus 160 favorite. Biggest favorite on the day over Asher Wojciechowski, and seven and a half run total. But Iwakuma has not looked like himself. He had himself a great first two-thirds of the season last year. This year, I mean, he's not a great high strikeout guy. 21% strikeout rate's fine, 21.7. It's above average, but he hasn't really shown that this season. In 11 innings, he has only eight strikeouts. He usually doesn't walk many batters. In fact, last year, he and Phil Hughes rivaling for historical uh, walk rates, but 3% walk rate last year was great. Did walk three batters last time out against the Dodgers, but pitching at home, his one weakness is the long ball. like to think that that's going to be mitigated a little bit by pitching in safe go field, so I like his spot. At the same time, though, not forcing him in at 8,300 despite being a big favorite. What I will be doing is playing some Seattle bats. Nelson Cruz out of this world right now. Eight home runs, and if you look at the logs, all of those eight home runs have come in the last eight games, including two two-homer games. So the guy's absolutely locked in. $4,700, still a crazy cheap price tag. Kyle Seeger, you know I love him at home against the righty. $3,500, he's certainly in play. Cano is only $3,800, he's in play. Maybe a little Mariner stack might be in play for me tonight. I like that a lot. And outside of that, really not targeting any Houston bats. I mean, you've got guys like Chris Carter who've just been absolutely terrible. Evan Gaddis, if you want to chase a home run. I guess would make a, uh, a fine play, but I'm really not going to try to force him in. And outside of that, I mean, this Houston line has just been so bad. So maybe this is where Yokum gets it turned around. I'm not sure I'm willing to pay to find out tonight, especially in cash games. But with that, that's going to wrap things up here for the FanDuel Punch-Out. As you know, I'm Big Italy 42. Check out all of our great content at dailyfantasycafe.com. Follow us on Twitter at DFCafe. I'm at Big Italy 42. I will see you tomorrow.